we have a welcome by all the women of Greater Manchester who um, I want to introduce you Barbara. Barbara is going to introduce Barbara is a member of the MacFest team. Thank you very much. It is wonderful to see you all here today and it is wonderful for us to be here together. And I have been in the Blackfest team since it began and it is so wonderful to see that we are still able to produce this for you and for the wider public who will watch online as well. So I'm delighted now to welcome some of our core Blackfest Women's Festival team who are going to come on stage and introduce themselves and say hello to you in their native language. I wasn't meant to introduce them all by name, but due to COVID, a memory loss. <laughs> That's my excuse. They're going to do it themselves. So please, ladies, one by one, will you come and say? The first, the first two of the young ladies. Yes.
Um, next, I'd like to welcome to you Kestra Shiraz. She has she is no introduction necessary, mashallah. She's the founder and executive director of MacFest, and she's also the, the director of the Muslim Women's Art Foundation, and she's going to say a few words. Thank you so much, Sandra.
is one of the best ways of enriching our lives. So thank you to Richard Art Gallery as well. Now, on the question of diversity, I talked about you know, often as a Mancunian or adopted Mancunian, I say Manchester is center of the universe. Mm -hmm. And I say that because I know it.
the main member of the Noble Chew Cranks, um, a profound predicament after the death of her mother in 1897, and this is when her father offers her a to commit suicide as a solution for dealing with the grief of losing her mother. After that, there was more time than to come and she was faced with suicide with her older brother Vladimir in 1899, and the death of her father. Alexander Trevnovsky in the same year. We were in the same day where I had to at the age of 20 years ago, then decided to go to live in French occupied North Africa. Um, upon arrival, rather than seeking out the food we were in, um, in the unknown, she effectively alienated herself from European colonial settlers or as new residents. And she embarked on a fascinating journey for the duration of her short yet significant life. She submerged herself in the customs of a super beloved, where astonishingly she was accepted, treated ambiguously as a marion, and she transformed her dress code in order to facilitate inconspicuous travel and in the shadow of the slam she had. I'm able to pass everything but completely unobserved. An excellent position to be in for observing. If women are not good at this, it's because their costume attracts attention. Women have always been able to be looked at, and they aren't much above the birth I This attitude, I think, is far too much advantage to know. And this is just a before her death. She knows no one ever lived more from day to day than I, or was more dependent on chance. It is an inescapable chain of events that has brought me to this point, rather than I who have caused things sound. She's addressed as seen at mood sorty when a civil trouble is prepared. She provokes an angry response from the French occupation government. And in irrespective of that one to tell, she stays in Algeria, articulating controversial anti-colonial opinions. And this in turn provokes an assassination attempt on her life in 1901. Despite further potential risks, Isabel marries an Algerian soldier, Sidney
have uh, greetings all the way from New York from uh, an advisor from ActFest and also an advisor for Women's Art Festival, Chris Sakura Bani, who's also the executive director of the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding in New York.
sorry, not performance, fashion, fashion, fashion parade. <laughs> Thank you. 